Buckeye Nation, it's your boy Buckeye618, and I'm here to tell you a little story about somebody and also help ease the minds, and, you know, just take the frustration and pressure off some fans out there who may be scratching their head about this guy. Now, this guy is from Elwood, Indiana. He played in Indiana from 2002 to 2006. Over the course of his four years, he started 44 games for the Hoosiers, 22 at right tackle, seven starts at right tackle, three starts at right guard in 05, four starts at left tackle, and eight starts at center in 06, when he was actually a team captain over there. Now, this is a buck at channel. What am I doing talking about Indiana? I'm talking about new O-line coach, Justin Fry, who, you know, some, some questions on recruiting and, you know, the type of guy he is. He's coming from UCLA to Pac-12. Pac-12 doesn't get, doesn't get much recognition unless it's Oregon or USC. So I'm just here to talk about him and his coaching experience. And, you know, hopefully his track record can, you know, take some ease off the mind. A little fun fact about him, he actually helped coach the Pouncey brothers at Florida. And, you know, Marquise and Mike Pouncey, one of them plays for the Steelers, who's now retired. And I'm sure the other one is still in the league unless he's retired too. But I know he played for the Chargers. Now, Justin Fry is a former UCLA online coach. Former and now current worker with Ryan Day. Um, everyone was kind of iffy on Coach, you know, Coach does firing. And, like, why would, you know, Coach Day do that? We had a very well put together offense. He helped bring in, you know, top recruits. But people were kind of, you know, kind of, you know, at a crossroad in terms of Coach does recruiting and bringing in the top guys out of certain classes. But he helped bring in Paris Johnson, who's a five-star and I'm pretty sure a starter right now. And also incoming Tegra Tisha Bola, who's a four-star, and they're both from Ohio. Now, he worked with Ryan Day at Temple in 2012 and Boston College in 2013 and 14. Coach Day and Coach Day was the offensive coordinator, and Coach Fry was the O-line coach at both schools. Day left Boston College to go on to the NFL, while Coach Fry remained with the Eagles before going to UCLA with Chip Kelly, now, re now reunited with Coach Day at Ohio State. When he was the online coach at Temple within the seasons, helped rushing attack and improving online, which ranked seventh in the nation in 2011 with 256.5 rushing yards per game and tied fifth with 38 rushing touchdowns. Averaged more than 200 rushing yards per game in 2012 and only allowed 41 sacks over two seasons in Philly with the Eagles. Now, the Eagles ranked in the top 20 nationally in rushing offense and only allowed 43 total sacks in 2013 and 14, so about 20 sacks each in both of those two seasons. The Eagles struggled offensively for the next two years after Coach Day left, ranking in the bottom three in 2015 and 2016. That just lets you know how powerful and, you know, how the chemistry worked between those two coaches at the day left. You know, it seems like kind of like a match made in heaven when both of them came together to help out. You know, not only like the rushing attack, but the offense as a whole. And but in 16 and 17, they bounced back when they ranked 25th nationally in rushing yards per game with 220.4, tied for 12th nationally with just 15 sacks allowed in 13 games. Now, UCLA's offense steadily improved over four years at UCLA. Had one of the top rushing offenses in the country with each of his last two seasons, ranking 12th in FBS with 230.6 rushing yards per game in 2020. 14th with 215.1 rush yards per game in 2021, whilst allowing less than two sacks per game in both seasons. A game that's pretty notable when um, Coach O was at LSU and he came in, you know, you know, just trash talking to the fans like, oh, you know, that sissy blue shirt, you know, you guys aren't even that good. And UCLA gave, you, <laughs> they gave LSU that good old spanking and they sent them home packing. And, and, you know, that was kind of like a, you know, kind of a buzz around there. Like, okay, you know, maybe this season is definitely different. And this past 2021 season was anything but shocking. You know, you saw the top teams go down, like Clemson and maybe some other notable teams that didn't do so hot this year. Now, with Coach Fry's recruiting record, he helped recruit Chris Lindstrom, who was a three-star recruit when arriving at Boston College in 2014, but went on to be picked 14th overall in the 2019 NFL Draft to the Atlanta Falcons. Higher than, and which was higher than any other Ohio State lineman when Coach Stud was at the NFL. So that just lets you know his development and his coaching, you know, other than recruiting, because in my opinion, the stars don't really matter, but it's about development, development, development. Because, you know, that five star and, you know, all college honors and all that stuff looks good till you go up against grown men in the big leagues. <clears throat> now, 
Coach Fire recruited Alec Lindstrom, which is also Chris's younger brother, expected to be an early rounder in the 2022 NFL Draft after being a Remington Trophy finalist for Boston College this past season. And also with Sean Ryan, which Coach Fire's highest recruit in 2019, with him being recruit number two ranked guard in his class, who played left tackle at UCLA, went on to earn freshman All-American honors in his first season and first team all pack 12 honors this past season. Now, <clears throat> I think with the recruits that Coach Stud brought in and, you know, what they already know, I'm sure no major changes are going to come to Ohio State, but maybe, you know, some improvement here or there. We got running back Trevion Henderson. We got Meatball and Mayan, Mayan Williams. We also got another running back who I can't think of his name right now. Please forgive me. Evan Pryor. Evan Pryor. Evan Pryor, who is also a top running back out of the class that Trevion Henderson came to. We're also getting recruit Dolan Hayden from Indiana. Dolan Hayden's got some history with other separate teams, including, I'm not sure if it's his father or his grandfather, uncle maybe, but it definitely has roots in college football and them also being great running backs. So I think this hire will also be great for Ryan Day because Ryan Day has been kind of cleaning house a little bit with some of these coaches. In the other video, I talked about the defensive side and this side. You know, I just, I just wanted to talk about the offense and how it's going to be moving forward. You know, Coach Brian Hartline with the wide receivers, he got promoted to the passing game coordinator, which will also help because our wide receiver core is just stacked across the board. I want to say Emeka Ibuka, he was a top recruit coming out of his class along with Julian Fleming, like literally like a year apart. We got Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, the NFL legend Marvin Harrison's kid. Um, they're up next. And also the probably one of the best wide receivers in FBS college right now, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So we're in good hands. Also, Eastern, you know, after the departure of Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, I believe that the offense is in great hands. You know, we also got Coach Tony Alford coaching up the running backs. He's been great with, you know, J.K. Dobbins, Ezekiel Elliott. Even when we didn't recruit that good, you know, he was always, you know, helping improve running backs. I remember running back Mike Weber, you know, he wasn't a top recruit. He was, I want to say, a Juco transfer. And he also helped him develop and be a great running back within his time at Ohio State till J.K. Dobbins came. But we all know that story. And, you know, I just wanted to help clear the heads and ease the minds of all the Buckeye fans out there and say, I think we're in great hands moving forward.